uh, thanks a lot for the introduction and for the presentation. Uh, so um, I'm going, uh, to, uh, the title of my talk is Microfluidics, Drops and Jets. Uh, this work has been done in the LOF. LOF is a joint laboratory between uh, Rodia, CNRS and the University of uh, Bordeaux. Uh, this work has been done in collaboration uh, with uh, many people, uh, PhD student Oriane Bonhomme, uh, Jack Lang, Adeline Perrault, Sébastien Lecommandou from uh, LCPO and Fabien Guillermo from uh, 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 Medical Center. Uh, this work deals with uh, microfluidics. I think you all know what uh, microfluidics is. Microfluidics encompasses all the techniques and all the devices that allows uh, to uh, control and to manipulate fluids at uh, the micronic uh, scale or typically or at the sub-millimeter scale. Uh, this field has known a large development uh, since the introduction of PDMS devices and soft lithography by Whiteside in 1998. Uh, you can see here a typical uh, ship. And the key applications of uh, these uh, techniques are typically uh, biology, uh, DNA analysis, proteomics, and analytical chemistry. In, uh, in my lab, we try to apply uh, these uh, techniques to chemistry. We synthesize uh, inside such devices, uh, polymers, particles, small molecules. Uh, the main advantages of uh, these uh, techniques is that um, we can have a continuous process as opposed to uh, batch processes. This allows us uh, a better control of the residence time because all the molecules, all the polymers, spend the, the same time in the device. So like this, you can control precisely the resonance time. Also, the, these devices are very small, so it is very easy to control the temperature. Uh, this allows us to study exothermic reaction that uh, cannot be studied in a batch uh, because uh, they will be very dangerous if we do them in, uh, in batch. So these devices are more safe. Of course, there is a um, very important uh, drawback because uh, these devices are very small and if you want to produce uh, polymers or if you want to produce surfactant, uh, you produce a low quantity of matter with just one device. So. Uh, the idea to use this, uh, this uh, device and uh, to produce is to number up. Uh, Microfluidics uh, also allows the preparation of very nice uh, emulsions or very nice uh, uh, particles. And uh, in the following, I will explain you how uh, we uh, do uh, this uh, uh, this kind of uh, materials and how we uh, use them. So the outlines of my talk are the following. First, I will uh, uh, show you a study uh, dealing with uh, biphasic immiscible fluids and I will um, explain how it's possible uh, to control the nature of the flow to control the production of droplets and to control the production of jets. Then I will uh, present you two applications of uh, this work. The fabrication of polymersome that has been made in collaboration with uh, LCPO and Sébastien Le Commandou, and uh, the fabrication of uh, fibers of, uh, of fibers that has been done in collaboration with uh, Fabien Guillermo. So uh, we wanted to study the formation of uh, droplets and, uh, and jets, and uh, we uh, began with a very simple homemade device. We take a capillary tube, a circular capillary tube, we elongate it, we cut this part, and we use this as a nozzle. We put this uh, cylindrical capillary tube into a square capillary tube. The size of the square, uh, the internal size of the square is exactly the external size of uh, the uh, circular uh, capillary tube. Like this, we get a perfect centering, and uh, this point is very important. Uh, we inject the external fluid 
in the square capillary tube and the internal fluid in the circular capillary tube. And uh, uh, we get uh, this kind of uh, object. We have uh, studied the, the flow diagram. In fact, what we have done, uh, we impose the flow rate by using syringe pump. And on this uh, diagram, we report the nature of the flow as a function of the internal flow rate and the external flow rate. So if we set the external flow rate, for example here, and if I increase progressively the internal flow rate, I move from small droplets to plugs, then to wavy jets, and then to large jets which are stable. Uh, if I set the uh, internal flow rate, and if I increase the external one, I, uh, I begin with a large jet, then I move to a wavy jet, then to uh, plugs, and then I go back uh, to another jet, a small one that we will call jetting, uh, which differs from this one because we have a, a jet part and after we have some droplets. Uh, we have looked at the uh, size distribution of the droplets. If you want, uh, you can see here that the droplets are very monodispersed. If you want to produce a monodispersed emulsion, the monodispersity is better in this region than in this one. So uh, we want to understand this diagram and we want to understand uh, what are the parameters that are in charge of the transition between the drops uh, which here are the blue uh, symbols, and the jets. So we want to understand this transition, so uh, we, we want to answer to the following questions. What, why are jets unstable? So we consider a jet, for example uh, uh, a jet, this one, and we want to understand why this jet uh, becomes unstable when we decrease the internal flow rate. Um, at rest, the answer of, the, of uh, this question is easy. Because if there is no flow, let us consider a, uh, a jet, so a cylinder of liquid. Uh, this, uh, this cylinder is unstable due to uh, surface tension. In fact, uh, the system wants to minimize its free energy. The free energy is given by uh, the surface tension times the surface, and the system wants to minimize its surface energy, so it minimizes the surface area between the two liquids, and the jet breaks, and you, you get droplets. Uh, in presence of uh, flow, the situation is more complex because there is an interplay between the flow and the surface forces. So to study uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, question, uh, we have performed a linear stability analysis of the flow. We have considered a jet, we have introduced some perturbation, and uh, we try to, to know if this, these perturbations are going to grow or to decrease. So uh, the details of our calculation are summarized here. We make the, propor the perturbation proportional to, uh, to an exponential. Uh, K is the wave vector, and uh, omega is the growth rate. Uh, our calculations uh, are made in the lubrication framework. This means that we consider that the wavelength of the perturbation is large compared to the radius of the capillary tube. Uh, this allows us to perform analytical calculation, and the calculations are very uh, easy. We use the Stokes equation, and we use the mass conservation. Like this, we get the dispersive equation. This equation uh, links the growth rate to the wave vector. Uh, we can see that this equation uh, is a function of uh, uh, lambda. Lambda is the ratio of viscosity between the internal phase and the external one. Uh, it's also a function of uh, uh, the size of the, of the jet R divided by the size 
of uh, the capillary tube and of a uh, genin capillary number, Ka, which is the ratio between the viscous forces and the surface tension forces. Um, F is a positive function and uh, we can see that uh, for low value of Ka, uh, omega is going uh, to be positive. This means that uh, long waves uh, uh, are going uh, to be unstable. Uh, so this means that jets are going to be unstable. And uh, we can also see, if we look uh, in more details to this function, that there is a, a, a mode that is going uh, to, to, to grow uh, very fast, there is a, a, fastest, a fastest growing mode and uh, as omega is positive for this, uh, for this mode, this means that we have to see in fact droplets uh, which characteristic size uh, will be given by this mode. So uh, if we uh, stay at this level of the analysis we have shown that jets are unstable and that uh, uh, droplets have to be observed. Uh, on the experimental diagram, we have seen jets, so we may wonder why we see jets. In fact, uh, uh, this, uh, in this analysis, we have done a temporal analysis, but we have uh, don't look at the way the uh, the instability grows. It is uh, to, to really understand what happened, it is uh, uh, very important to, lo to look at the way the instability grows. So it's important to look uh, at the velocity of uh, the fastest uh, growing mode. Uh, if we look at uh, uh, at the perturbation, if we look at the perturbation and if we know the velocity uh, of the fastest uh, growing mode, if the velocity is positive, then the perturbation will grow but will be convected by the flow. So as it is convected by the flow, uh, we will observe jets. At the opposite, if the velocity of the perturbation is negative, then the perturbation will grow and will uh, move upstream. So in this situation, we will see drops. Uh, we have used the criteria uh, developed by Sarlos to uh, calculate uh, the velocity of the fastest uh, growing mode. And uh, we have decided that the transition between jets and droplets uh, will occur when the velocity of the fastest growing mode uh, will be equal to zero. Using this uh, criteria, we have built a master curve uh, in the parameter plane uh, Kx, and uh, on this graph, we are able uh, to draw uh, two uh, zones, a zone corresponding to the droplets and a zone corresponding to the jet. Uh, the, the transition uh, between uh, these two zones uh, depends upon uh, lambda. Uh, lambda is the ratio of, uh, uh, the, of, of viscosity. It's the ratio of the internal viscosity divided by the external one. Uh, from uh, this uh, data, uh, we can go back to our experiments and uh, draw a line. We see that uh, this line fits uh, perfectly well the data. There is no adjustable parameter. So we see that we can predict uh, nicely the transition between the drops and the jets. And if we summarize uh, the results, what we can say is the following. When we move from uh, uh, low internal flow rate to high internal flow rate, we move uh, from drops to large jets, these jets are in fact stabilized by the wall. In fact, uh, in this case, uh, the jets are unstable, but uh, the, uh, the, the time uh, for growing, the instability uh, time, is 
uh, much longer than uh, the convection time. So we see jets. Sorry for that. And if we uh, look at uh, the jetting, in this case, uh, the, the time for the growing is, uh, is small, but the time for the convection is, uh, sm is much more smaller. So uh, in this case, the jets are stabilized by the flow. So we have two kinds of jets. Some are stabilized by the presence of the walls, and the other ones are stabilized by the convection, by the flow. Uh, we have uh, done uh, this experiment for various radius of the capillary tube by, uh, for various surface tension, and uh, we can see that uh, uh, for all the experiments, uh, the model fits uh, the data uh, quite well. Uh, so we have um, a way to predict the transition between the droplets and the jet. We know how to produce uh, jets. For example, if you want to produce jet, we have to have very low surface tension. In this case, uh, the zone of uh, the droplets is uh, very small. Uh, and uh, we can also use uh, this uh, analysis to measure the surface tension between two fluids. Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, experiment is very easy to do. And uh, uh, when we know, the, when we measure the transition, using our analysis, uh, we can calculate the surface tension. And we use this uh, uh, to measure surface tension, uh, for example, uh, to measure surface tension in microemulsions. So uh, now we know how to, to do droplets, we know how to do uh, uh, jets, and we are going to use them uh, to uh, prepare uh, multiple emulsions and polymerism and fibers. So I move to the second part of, uh, of my talk. Uh, it deals with multiple emulsions. It has been done in collaboration uh, with Sébastien Lecommandou and uh, Adeline Perrault. Uh, I have shown you that uh, it's possible in microfluidic device uh, to uh, prepare emulsion, and um, uh, it's, I will, um, we will going to see we will go to see that it's easy uh, to take this emulsion and uh, to do an emulsion again and to obtain multiple emulsions. So we use the same uh, device than uh, previously. Uh, but uh, now we take, uh, the, we take the, the external cylinder and we put it in another cylinder and like this we redo the, the same thing and we are able uh, to uh, prepare multiple emulsions. Here you have uh, the flow diagram, so uh, this flow rate is the external flow rate here and uh, it, in this case it's water. Here we have the oil, and here we have water again. So we can see that we can prepare multiple emulsions, like this one or like that one, but also that we can prepare uh, jets uh, with uh, droplets inside. Uh, we have studied the transition between uh, droplets and jets, and we have seen that uh, the square corresponds to uh, droplets and uh, the dots corresponds to jet and uh, we are able as previously to predict the transition between uh, this zone and that zone by using the, the previous uh, modeling. Uh, on this graph uh, I have reported the number of droplets we have in the, in the final droplet uh, as a function of uh, the flow rate. Uh, so you, you can see that in this zone we have only one or two droplets and that in this zone we are able uh, to encapsulate uh, something like 20 droplets in a big one. 
So to see better this, uh, this point, you see here the picture that we are uh, able to take. Uh, so we can control the number of droplets that are encapsulated, but also the amount of, uh, uh, of oil phase in the, in the droplets and the size of the droplets. So this is a very uh, easy experiment uh, to do and it allows you uh, to prepare uh, monodisperse uh, multiple emulsions uh, which are very uh, well controlled. It's a micrometer? It's, uh, they are quite large. It's, uh, uh, it's micrometer, yes, micrometer. micrometer. <laughs> but they are quite large, it's uh, 500 micrometer. Uh, at this stage, we have, uh, we have no model to, uh, to predict the size, the precise uh, size of uh, the droplet, but we have been able uh, to draw uh, a master curve that allows us uh, to choose our parameter and uh, uh, to set the number of internal droplet and the distance uh, between uh, the droplet as a function of this parameter, which is the ratio of uh, the external flow rate divided by the, two, by the sum of the two internal flow rate. So uh, if we want to have a, a large amount of droplet separated by a uh, large distance, then we go here. We use uh, this value of uh, the Q3 divided by Q1 plus Q2 uh, value, and like this, uh, we can have a huge number of encapsulated droplets. Uh, the, um, so this, um, these droplets are, are very nice, and uh, we think that uh, the main application of, of the such kind of uh, system is the encapsulation. In fact, this system allows uh, to perform uh, one pot uh, encapsulation and with uh, Sébastien, we tried to prepare uh, polymers of them using uh, this, uh, this system. So we tried to put uh, drugs uh, in this part or in the, in the membrane. And what we wanted to prepare is a vesicle. So we want to have air water, a membrane, and outside water. So the strategy we use is the following. We we, we have uh, a solution of, uh, of, uh, of polymer, of uh, polyvinyl alcohol with salt, uh, with some uh, active molecules. Here we have organic phase. The organic phase uh, was uh, a mixture of polymer, polybutadiene block uh, polyethylene oxide, and chloroform and cyclohexane. And uh, uh, the water phase here uh, was the same than, uh, than this one. So like this, we prepare uh, multiple emulsions uh, or as previously. And then as chloroform is soluble in water, uh, the chloroform goes out. And at the end, after drying, we are left with a, a polymer zone, a polymer uh, bilayer. So we have prepared these emulsions, and uh, we have uh, dry uh, this emulsion. The cyclohexane uh, has, uh, has lived and goes in the, in the water. And uh, for example, from uh, this emulsion, after drying, we get uh, for this kind of picture. So we have been able to prepare polymerism with uh, one droplet or two droplets or even uh, 20 droplets that are stick together. Uh, these polymerisms are unstable. In fact, their lifetime is around uh, one or two days. And um, actually, we tried to polymerize, uh, to, uh, to, to polymerize uh, this uh, bilayer in order to get uh, stronger polymerism. So I have shown you a first um, application of, uh, of uh, this, uh, this emulsion. And 
now I will uh, move to the last part of my, of my talk and I will speak about uh, fibers. So what we want to do, we want to prepare uh, biomaterials. Uh, this work is uh, done in collaboration with uh, Fabien Guillermo of uh, the University of Bordeaux II. Uh, it deals with, uh, in fact, uh, Fabien uh, tried to uh, prepare biomaterials for uh, tissue engineering. Uh, there is a considerable, a considerable uh, demand for the development of novel methods to uh, replace uh, damaged tissues. Usually, uh, people use synthetic materials, but uh, these uh, materials have low integration into the body. So uh, one way uh, to, uh, to answer to this question is to uh, produce uh, a tissue from uh, the cell of the patient. And this will allow uh, uh, this will allow uh, this will eliminate uh, the chance of rejection of uh, the material and uh, uh, and uh, enhance the prospect of complete integration into the patient's body. So our aim is uh, to produce uh, blood vessels. It's uh, really. Uh, for the future, and we tried just uh, to, to, to begin this, uh, uh, this project. Uh, so we want to, to produce uh, this kind of, uh, of structure. Uh, an important point to note is that uh, cells have a very low ability uh, to self-assemble. If you put cells and if you let them uh, do alone, they will never uh, build a fiber like this. So what uh, you have to do if you want uh, to, to build uh, blood vessels, uh, you have to uh, design an appropriate scaffold, uh, for example, a fiber or aloe fiber, and then fill this scaffold with the appropriate cells. So we try to, to do this. Um, we use the same uh, devices than before. In fact, we use two kinds of devices. Uh, this one that are very easy to do, that are uh, glass devices. So you can see here the capillary tube and the two uh, inlet. Or we also use uh, PDMS uh, devices. Uh, uh, this is a free uh, level uh, PDMS uh, device. Uh, this allows us, these three levels allows us uh, to have a nice uh, centering of, uh, of the flow. And uh, we use uh, two miscible uh, fluids, uh, a solution of alginate that uh, will be the internal uh, fluid and a solution of uh, water and calcium that will be the external uh, fluid. Uh, these two fluids are, are miscible, uh, but as we have a uh, high Pickley number in these uh, devices, they flow side by side and there is no diffusion uh, between uh, the two fluids. Moreover, as we have had uh, calcium salt in the water, we have a complexation reaction between the alginate and the calcium, and like this, we get a gel. So this complexation uh, uh, reaction, uh, which is formed by electrostatic uh, interaction, uh, allows us to uh, fabricate a fiber. Uh, we have, as, um, as uh, previously, we have done uh, a flow diagram uh, so, uh, on this uh, diagram, I have uh, reported uh, three uh, different zones. Uh, the green zone <coughs> corresponds to uh, low concentration in salt, in salt, and in this zone, we do not, uh, we do not uh, fabricate uh, gel, we do not fabricate uh, fibers, and we, we have uh, only 
uh, a co-flow between the alginate and the, and the, the salt uh, solution. Uh, in the blue region, which is small, but uh, which uh, exists, uh, we, uh, we get fibers. Uh, the blue uh, zone corresponds to an increase in salt concentration. And we, if we further increase the salt concentration, we get this red zone. In the red zone, uh, we get not a fiber, not a continuous fiber like this one, but we get a jellified droplet. And if I increase uh, uh, more of the salt concentration, uh, then uh, the experiment becomes very difficult and we have clogging uh, effects. So if we want to obtain fibers, we have to work in, uh, in this zone. Uh, this behavior is uh, easy uh, to understand. In fact, in this zone, we have not enough salt, so we are not able to fabricate the, the gel. Uh, in this zone, we have uh, salt, and uh, the gel, uh, the fabrication of the gel uh, occurs, and it occurs uh, in, the, in the device, but not in the uh, focalization zone. Uh, in this part, the fabrication of the gel, the, the concentration of the cell is, uh, is important, and the gel, the fabrication of the gel occurs uh, occurs uh, here, in fact, uh, in the nozzle region. And um, uh, uh, when the fabrication of the gel occurs here, the gel is submitted to elongational forces, and as it is a fragile gel, it breaks. And the breaking of the gel induces uh, the formation of, uh, of small droplets uh, like this one. So by using this flow diagram, we know uh, what are the salt concentration and the uh, flow rate that we need to use to get uh, these fibers. So now we know how to, how to fabricate a fiber. And uh, we, we wanted uh, to add the cells in the alginate in order to fabricate a fiber uh, filled with, uh, with cells. This has been made previously by other teams. So you can see here, uh, I don't know if you see very well, but you can see the fibers that have been uh, performed by uh, a team in uh, Korea. And we can, you can see that a few cells that are present that are present in the fiber. But these fibers uh, have a low density in, uh, in cells, so there, there are only a few cells in, uh, in the fiber, and uh, uh, the quantity of cells is not sufficient to uh, prepare uh, a biomaterial. So uh, in our work, uh, we have done the same experiment than uh, the other people, and uh, as them, we have uh, produced uh, fibers with a low density of cells. Uh, we want to increase the, uh, the quantity of, uh, of cells, so uh, we have solved uh, many, uh, many troubles. Uh, uh, we have changed a little bit the, the formulation of the solution in cells uh, to avoid the sticking of, uh, the, of the cells on the capillary tube. We have uh, used uh, surface treatment. We have uh, used surface treatment with uh, BAC. Uh, and uh, to avoid also a gravity uh, problem, we have uh, introduced in the, in the syringe, so in this, uh, so in, the, in, in this part, uh, we have introduced a magnetic uh, stirrer uh, to uh, mix uh, the solution of cell and uh, to avoid uh, gravity uh, trouble. Like this, we have been able to increase the concentration of cells in the fiber. So this is a better point, but as you can see on uh, this uh, on this picture, the, cell, the fiber that we have obtained are inhomogeneous. So you can see here an aggregate of cell, 
the density is okay, but after here you see that uh, uh, we have no cell here and uh, another uh, aggregate here. The two aggregates are linked by an alginate fiber. So what we want to do is to obtain an homogeneous uh, fiber. Uh, and uh, uh, we try to understand why we, we get uh, so uh, inhomogeneous uh, fiber. So here we have two movies. One uh, for, uh, we have two movies, so I will show you the movies. I play, I play the and uh, you see that we have been able to solve this uh, trouble by uh, playing with the flow rate. In fact, if uh, the jet is focused uh, in the zone of uh, focalization, uh, we don't understand perfectly why we get this, but uh, we get uh, the breaking of, uh, of the jet and we get aggregate. If we don't uh, focus the jet and uh, if uh, uh, the external flow rate is lower, then uh, we get something which is more homogeneous and uh, uh, where there is uh, no hole in the, in the fiber. So by using this, we have been able, so by reducing, in fact, the external flow rate, we have been able uh, to fabricate dense fiber, uh, which are very nice. Uh, we can uh, produce uh, fiber um, uh, with a very long length, uh, let's say more than uh, 20 centimeter or 40, uh, 30 centimeter. And the size of uh, the, the fiber is uh, typically around 100 micron or 200 micron. So, uh, in fact, what we have seen on these uh, movies is that we obtain a dense fiber when there is, in fact, no elongational flow uh, at the uh, inlet of uh, the device. So here you get uh, the, the picture we have been able to, to take on our fibers, and you can see on this one that we are able to prepare uh, fiber with a high density of, uh, of cell. So, uh, to conclude, uh, we have been able uh, to, to prepare a dense cell fiber. Uh, at this stage, we try to understand why uh, uh, we know how to prepare this, but we don't uh, understand really why uh, in one case, we obtain uh, homogeneous fiber, and uh, why, in the other case, we obtain uh, an, agri uh, 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 an inhomogeneous fiber. Uh, we believe that this is due to uh, the zone of uh, focalization and to the elongational flow, and we try uh, to look at, uh, at, this, uh, at this question in more detail. So, uh, in conclusion, I have uh, uh, shown you uh, what are the mechanisms of uh, drop formation. I have uh, shown you that we are able to, uh, to prepare multiple emulsions that are very well controlled. Uh, I have uh, shown you the fabrications of, uh, of fibers and uh, that we are able uh, to fabricate uh, fibers uh, with uh, a high quantity of cells. And the outlook uh, of uh, this work are the following. Uh, we are going to understand uh, the concentration homogeneities uh, that occurs during the formation of uh, cell fibers. Uh, we try uh, to, uh, to fabricate uh, hollow fibers. So uh, this may be due uh, by using uh, free co-flow and uh, to and uh, use the same uh, the same procedure we want also to move 
to, uh, to collagen and not uh, to alginate. If we want to move to collagen, then the coagulation uh, reaction will be uh, induced by uh, change in temperature and not in salt concentration. So it's a little bit more tricky uh, to do. And uh, so these are the main outlooks for the, uh, the parts dealing with materials. And we want also uh, to use the droplets uh, that uh, you have seen as chemical reactors uh, to, uh, to follow chem uh, chemical reaction or to uh, select enzyme. Oh, thanks. <laughs>